Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmay of our Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on Java programming. So today's topic is going to be polymorphism in Java programming. Now, in the previous video, we discussed the topic on access modifiers in Java. So if you have missed that video, you can check it out in this playlist. I have a full entire playlist on Core Java, and I am uploading videos regularly to cover this entire topic. So I'll link the entire playlist in the description, and you can also see a card on the top right corner. So with that being said, let's start off with polymorphism in Java. So quickly open up your browser and go to our official website that is simplesnippets.tech and go to courses under the core Java programming. You will find polymorphism in Java. In fact, what I'll do is I'll paste this entire link in the video description so that you directly go to this article itself. And once you have this open, what we'll do is we'll read a little bit about polymorphism and then we'll see a programming example. So make sure you watch this video till the end because in the end, we'll see the program example and initially we'll go through the theory. So we get both theory as well as practical knowledge in this one exact video. So starting off with polymorphism, what exactly is polymorphism? We'll just go through this theoretical article that we have on our official website. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so polymorphism in Java, which basically in Java is of two types that is compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. So we've already seen method overloading in this entire playlist and that is the part of compile time polymorphism. But before we get to that, let's first understand what exactly polymorphism is. So polymorphism is derived from two Greek words basically, which is poly and morph. It's not really related to programming or computer science, but it's just a Greek word, which basically means that multiple forms. Okay. The, uh, it is split into two words that is poly and morph. Poly means multiple and morph means forms. So polymorphism basically means the ability to take many forms. So in terms of programming, polymorphism helps us to perform a single task in different ways. Okay, so it is one of the most striking features of object oriented programming. And since Java programming language is an object oriented programming, this feature by default comes with it. So in terms of Java programming, as I mentioned, polymorphism is the capability of a method to do multiple things using the same name. Okay. In other words, polymorphism allows you to define one interface and have multiple implementations. Now, as I mentioned, there are two types of polymorphism. So if you're coming from C++ background, even in C++, we had the different types of polymorphism that is compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. So this must be pretty understandable as it is the same concept. Compile time means the method gets resolved at compile time and the runtime means the method is resolved at runtime when the program is running. But in Java, it is a little bit simple because we do not have operator overloading concept, which is there in C++. Here we only have method overloading, which is the part of compile time polymorphism, which we have already extensively covered in this playlist. What I'll do is I'll drop that link in the description also, and you can see a card on the top right corner for that video. So we're not going to extensively talk about compile time polymorphism. We are mo mostly going to focus on runtime polymorphism in this video. So yes, as I mentioned, compile time polymorphism is method overloading. You can see this is also a link. You can click on it to see that article. And then we have runtime polymorphism, which is known as method overriding, which essentially comes into picture when we have inheritance in picture. Okay. So we also have studied in inheritance in this playlist. So you'll understand this very well. So directly jumping to the runtime polymorphism, which is also known as dynamic method dispatch or lead binding or dynamic polymorphism. So it is a process in which a call to an overridden method is resolved at runtime rather than compile time. Okay, now this comes into picture when inheritance happens. So let's say you have a super class and you have a subclass and you have the same methods in both the classes having the same signature also. So in runtime polymorphism, what you can do is you can use the super class to call the subclass method at runtime. So we'll see that example in a minute. And this basic feature is known as upcasting. Okay, there is an example over here, but what I would like is that we go to the NetBeans ID and code ourselves. So that will give us the best practice. So what we'll do is we'll jump to the NetBeans ID. Now you can read through this entire article. There are certain rules to follow in method overriding also. For example, final methods cannot be overridden. Static methods cannot be overridden. Private methods cannot be overridden and so on. So just go through them. What we'll do is in the meantime, let's jump to the NetBeans ID. So let's start off with compile time polymorphism program. So since I did not discuss a lot on compile time polymorphism, that is method overloading. Let's just code ahead because we've already seen that example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function or method named void add in that I'm going to say int 
x int y and I'm gonna say system dot out dot print ln addition is and here I'm in the brackets I'm gonna say x plus y okay so I created one method now I'm again going to create one more method with the same name that is void add but here I'm gonna say in z or z depending from where you live and I'm gonna perform addition of the three integers so this is basically method overloading using the same name but since there are different number of parameters over here there is no error and depending upon the arguments number of arguments being passed the method will be called so in the main function what I can do is I can say I can create an object polymorphism example obj is equal to new polymorphism example and I can say obj dot add 4 comma 4 so here this method will be called that is the first one and then I can also say comma 5 so in this case this method will be called so if I run this you can see addition is 8 addition is 13 so this was a very quick example on method overloading and I'm not gonna stretch this too much because we've extensively covered method overloading as I've already mentioned let's move on to method overriding okay so now we know that method overriding deals with inheritance so method overriding happens only when we have inheritance into picture so let's create one more class I'm gonna say class super class okay inside that what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna create a method named void show class okay and I'm just gonna print super class okay so I have my super class over here now what I'm gonna do is in our polymorphism example class which has the main method what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna perform inheritance over here and I'm gonna say extends super class okay so since polymorphism example class is acting as a subclass it will get this void show class method right now we have default access specifier but since it is inside the same package this show class will be inherited over here we've already talked about this in access specifiers or access modifiers in the previous video so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again create polymorphism example obj is equal to new polymorphism example and I'm gonna say obj dot show class so what do you think is going to be printed let's save this and let's try to run this so you can see it got printed super class because this exact method was being inherited in our subclass which is polymorphism example right so what we want is to be printed as polymorphism example class so in order to do that I'm gonna just copy this entire code over here and paste it inside our subclass now this is our subclass that is polymorphism example I'm just gonna comment it and saying subclass and this is our super class so here you can see a yellow underline which says that you need to add an annotation which says add adderate override now this is not compulsory but this is just for a reference purpose that you are overriding this class so what exactly is happening now is if I change this over here and say polymorphism class or subclass if you want I can save this and now if I run this you can see we are getting polymorphism class so this is method overriding that is the method show class in the subclass is overriding the method show class in the super class okay so now we can again take this one level up by using the same polymorphism example or using super class object to call subclass method so how how is that possible that is the dynamic method dispatch property we are going to do it right now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut this out now i'm going to create a super class object so super class obj is equal to new super class and now i'm going to say obj dot show class so obviously since I'm creating a super class object it is going to print this super class message right but what if I want to use this super class object to call the method of subclass so this is also possible over here and this is basically that runtime polymorphism so let me just first run this and show you what is printed right now we are printing super class right so now what I'm going to say is on the next line I'm going to say obj is equal to new and now I'm going to say new polymorphism example class so understand what I'm doing here the object basically is of a super class type but now that object is re-initialized or re-instantiated 
to refer the subclass type okay so initially our object was a super class object but now it's referencing the subclass and now if i say obj dot show class if i save this and if i run this you can see polymorphism class is shown because now our object is referencing the subclass so that's why it is calling the show class method of the subclass so if you are coming from a c++ background remember we were using the virtual keyword in order to achieve this methodology in order to achieve this functionality right so in java we don't have that virtual keyword it's directly possible to do that and this is basically the method overriding that is runtime polymorphism that is happening over here that is depending upon the class that is referenced the corresponding method is being called so i'm using the same object of superclass to call methods of subclass now i can have one more class which will extend superclass and i can use the same object of superclass to call the method of that subclass so if you want i can even show it right now i'll say subclass and inside this i'm again going to create or override this method and before that i need to perform the inheritance i'm going to say extends superclass and inside this i'm going to print subclass okay so i have one more class named subclass which is extending from superclass so superclass acts as a parent class over here so now again what i'm going to say is obj is equal to new now i can create this subclass also you can see i have three options so i'm going to say subclass and now i'm going to say obj dot obj dot show class and this time let's see what is printed there you go you can see subclass is printed so depending on the runtime scenario that which class is being referenced using the same object of superclass i can call the methods of the corresponding subclasses so this is an example of dynamic method dispatch or late binding or dynamic polymorphism so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of polymorphism the two types of polymorphism that is method overloading and method overriding and the difference between the two one happens at compile time and the other one happens at run time and yeah if you have any doubts you can put them in the comment section let me know how this video was if you like this video give it a thumbs up please like this video and share it with your friends and spread the knowledge as well you can also check out the website and prepare your answers for your exams and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace